Hello guys, in this video we will be actually running the simulation through OpenFoam. So the first step of this is obviously to download OpenFoam. So you can do this by just going to the OpenFoam website. <coughs> and you just go to download. <coughs> and you could run on Windows. And essentially you want to follow the steps that they give here to download it for the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. So upon like downloading open foam, you're going to want to open Ubuntu. Now you can see that it has finally loaded. So to access open foam, you just type in CD, open foam, open foam again, tutorials, compressible. And now we're going to do explorer.exe. <coughs> and now we can see all these different open foam things, right? So we want to use a sonic foam solver. So double click on this. We double click on this RAS. And now what we're going to do is these things like all this stuff right here. <clears throat> these are all like simulations I've just done for my own research purposes. But if you just download open foam, then you're only going to see these two. <clears throat> so the way we run simulations in open foam is that we first look for like one of the tutorial things that match what we kind of want to do. If you click on prism, <clears throat> click on zero and just click something like temperature You can see that it has wall conditions outlet and inlet conditions and some default face conditions that are that remain empty because we are simulating a 2d geometry we're going to need to use the default face boundary in order to like show that there's some empty condition. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is look at our geometry right here and notice that we don't need like all these conditions. We don't need these one, two, three, four, five, six conditions. <clears throat> we're going to set this, uh, we're going to set this wall, this wall, this wall, this, this wall to our outflow so we'll like name that outlet <clears throat> this is gonna be our inlet this is gonna be our like outflow in the back and we can just call it bottom wall because when we copy this prism file we are going to have to change every single uh, name for these inlet outlet things if we don't be smart and choose like a name that's similar to this <clears throat> so we can just name this bottom wall and then we can just name these wall conditions as prism wall. So we do that right now. Let's we'll start with the inlet. We just select an edge. And then we press N. Then let's call it inlet. Now we can do outlet. Hold down control and select these edges. Now let's do our bottom wall. Now we can do our prism wall. Let's just check the spelling. Okay, this looks good. And we can see we have four so far and we need our default faces. So we'll collect the select face tool. Select this face, N and default faces. <coughs> there. So now we have all these five conditions. We can just double check. And everything looks fine. 
And also, I changed the edge sizing a bit because when I ran this simulation, I found out that I was getting some errors due to the mesh not being as fine as it should be. So I just made the mesh more fine. Essentially, <clears throat> I changed the inlet to 30. As you can see, these two prism walls, we can call them to 100. These two front outflow regions as 100. And then these two side walls as 300. And that results in a much, much finer mesh, as you can see here. <clears throat> so now we can just check. Everything's in ASCII, so that's good. Now let's export this mesh as a fluent input file. And I'm going to name it this. Okay, so now you can just check downloads. And we can see that this is the one that I've just downloaded. So what we're going to want to do is first go to that open foam file for our prism. You want to copy this. <coughs> Let's rename this. You like nozzle tutorial. And now, what you're going to want to do is for each one of these initial conditions, you're going to want to edit it so it, it shows only inlet, outlet, bottom wall, prism wall, and default faces. So that means you're just going to go through all of these and delete this thing. <clears throat> and when you do that, just remember you have to press Control S to save. And I've already like done this for all my simulations so I can just click any of my other simulations and copy these files so when you're done deleting the unnecessary boundary you can just check and you can see one two three four five so there's five conditions And now what we're going to do is we're going to paste our mesh here. So let's go to downloads. Let's copy this mesh file. And then I paste it here. And now I, when I open Ubuntu, I can just continue the directory. CD Sonic Foam. Or AS nozzle tutorial. <clears throat> now we're going to use the fluent mesh to foam function in open foam in order to create a poly mesh file. So fluent mesh to foam. And then we just write the name of the mesh bell tutorial and enter. <clears throat> now it's created the poly mesh, so we just go to system or constant. Poly mesh, boundary, and check everything. So notice that all our inlet and outlets should be patch, but this has turned to a wall. So just change that to patch. And it's also fixed the spelling or the capitalization. And it and it defaults to this for our default faces so let's just change that again so now we have default faces prism wall bottom wall outlet and inlet so control s to save <clears throat> you can go back to our zero condition click something random and see that that makes sense everything matches so now essentially we're ready to run the simulation. So let me just show you the boundary conditions I've written for all these initial things. So here's alpha T. Here's epsilon.
Here's our turbulent kinetic energy K. <clears throat> New T. P. And this is just some pressure I chose at some random altitude that I want to test my nozzles at. So you can just change this to whatever altitude you want. So this is the chamber pressure, and this is the ambient pressure at whatever altitude. So you can see this is the same altitude. <clears throat> Temperature. Again, this depends nozzle to nozzle, so I just chose the external temperatures to be like 300 Kelvin and the internal temperature of the combustion chamber to be 3670 Kelvin. Remember, all of these are in Kelvin. Finally, our initial velocity. Okay, so now we want to go to our control dictionary, which will determine like what time interval we want our simulation to run at. So go to system, control dict. <clears throat> and what we want to do first is run like a test simulation to see if there are any errors. And then after that, if there are no errors, then we could just change this end time to make it go longer. And in order to not run from the complete start all over again and to not waste time, you just change this to latest. So I'm going to start this at 0 0.001. I'm going to write the delta t at 1 e to the negative 6. And I'll just leave this right interval at that. So this is the interval of time <clears throat> that it will save. Control S. Now we can just run the sonic foam solver. And sometimes you'll get like an error that says negative initial temperature and it'll show a negative temperature. And that makes sense, right? That's an error because you cannot have a temperature below zero Kelvin. So that's what I was having before. So that's why I made this mesh much finer because I found personally that making these mesh more fine usually fixes this problem. So if you ever run into that problem, the first thing you should try is just refining this mesh. And this simulation will take a while. By the way guys, when you're running the simulation, if you wanna just randomly check, like if it's almost done, you could just like press this and hold and you could see how it says time equals 0 0.000749 so you could get a rough estimate that it's like almost done right because our end time was supposed to be 0 0.001 okay so now that our simulation is finished we can see that it finished successfully like at the time that it was supposed to end it finally ended so now let's just Make it run for longer. Let's just change this to like 0 0.005. And since it's latest time, it's not going to start all the way from 0. It's going to start from 0 0.001 and then continue till 0 0.005. So now that you have saved that, you can just type sonic foam again. And now we just wait for it to run. OK, so now we can clearly see that our simulation has ended successfully. So now we're going to save the results. So what we do is we type in touch results.foam. You can name this whatever you want. You can name it like Bell Tutorial Results. It doesn't matter, but I'm just going to name it result. <clears throat> and then you type enter. Yeah. So now if you go to your nozzle tutorial, can see that we have all these files going all the way up to 0 0.005. 
or a point zero zero four nine from zero. So since this thing is in WSL, I decided that I can actually use my files by making a folder in my documents in Windows. So I just have a folder called Open Foam Files, and what I do is I copy files from this directory. So copy, paste. So now we have seen that we have finally finished copying these files over. So now we're, to view the results, we're going to open Paraview. And now we can open, let's go to open phone files. And we want to see our nozzle tutorial. Now click on results.foam. Click OK. Apply. Now we can see we have our simulation right here. And we have options to see our temperature, velocity, pressure, stuff like that. <clears throat> and now I'll run this. So you can clearly see that that was a pressure wave. And we can just freely switch to velocity. And it's pretty nice how you can see how there's a shock wave generated. And you can see our plume. And of course, <clears throat> you can do many things with these simulations. Like, for example, with my science fair project, I'm trying to optimize the plume expansion. So you can clearly tell how you can design a lot of these nozzles and then just test them with open foam and then see the plume expansion. So that's about it. And thanks for watching and bye.